Chair's 2020 Budget Extraordinary FEC Meeting. Antima holds 17th Annual General Meeting and Election. Convoy blockade. Governor Umahi orders arrest, prosecution of perpetrators. Super Eagles players giving deadline ahead of Nigeria Brazil friendly. Good morning. And welcome to the news. I am Jonah Ojay. President Muhammad Buhari is set to present the 2020 appropriation bill to, to a joint session of the National Assembly on Tuesday. The special advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Albeshino, confirmed this development at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting. The meeting considered the 2020 budget proposals before its present presentation to the National Assembly on Tuesday. The early presentation of the 2020 budget is meant to return the federal government budget cycle from May to June to January to December. The Senate had to had on Thursday increased the proposed 2020 budget from 10 point zero seven billion naira to ten point zero ten point seven two nine trillion naira. However, President Buhari and the leadership of the National Assembly had on Sunday night met behind closed doors at the President's official residence in Abuja. The organized labor says it has not shifted grounds on its plan to embark on a nationwide strike should the government fail to meet its demand on or October 16. The Nigeria Labor Congress NLC and the Trade Union Congress TUC had rejected the federal government's offer to adjust the salaries of public water workers on grade levels 0, 0, 07 to 14 with 11% consequential increase and 6.5% for those on grade levels 15 to 17. And also President Ali Baraba told newsmen in Abuja that Labour has resolved to embark on strike to draw government attention on the need to reconvene and, and negotiations that should have been concluded long ago. He insisted that government must see reason and holistically look at the issues raised to ensure the consequential adjustment of the new minimum wage impact on all workers across the various levels. He said that Labour is willing to dialogue with government. TUC General Secretary Musa Lawal collaborated with his NLC counterparts of commencing nationwide strike on October 16. President Muhammad Buhari has nominated Dr. Akil Mia Deshino for re-election as the president of the African Development Bank. Akil Umi disclosed this on Sunday in Lagos after his confirmment with the Mecca Annual Lifetime Achievement Award for outstanding performance by the Hallmarks of Labour Foundation. The former Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development thanked President Muhammad Buhari for the opportunity. Akin Rumi, who in 2015 became the first Nigerian to be elected president of the bank since its establishment in 1964, said that Nigeria had invested so much in him. He observed that despite all the African Development Bank's achievements, there is still much to do. Akin Rumi added that the country had developed in various fronts. He thanked and appreciated President Buhari for nominating him for re-election for a second term as President of the African Development Bank.
The federal government has approved mass redeployment of senior government officials across ministries, departments and agencies in a move aimed at repositioning the civil service for efficient service delivery. A total of 254 top government officials from salary grade levels 15 to 17 are affected in the exercise. In the Federal Civil Service, workers on the SGL-17 are directors, those on the SGL-16 are deputy directors, while those on the SGL-15 are assistant directors. A circular dated October 4 conveying the most de deployment and cited by newsmen on Sunday shows that 74 directors, 85 deputy directors and 95 assistant directors are affected in the SSIs. The circular is signed by the director overseeing the office of the permanent secretary, Mrs. A. I. Atta, on behalf of the acting head of the civil service of the Federation, Dr. Folashade Yemi Esang. Atta indicated that those affected included newly promoted and existing directorate level officers under the pool of the office of the head of the civil service of the Federation. She directed that all handover and takeover processes should be completed letters by Friday. She warned that any of the officers who disregard the de redeployment order will be sanctioned in line with relevant civil service rule. The Aba Chamber of Commerce Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Axima has held her council 17th annual general meeting and elections. The meeting is aimed at electing new leaders. And so news covered the event. Ruth Ohams reports. The focus of the annual general meeting is to elect new leaders and hand over of power. Lawrence Obeta, who was before now the first deputy president, was elected president. The escorts were formally introduced by the patron and one of the past presidents of ASIMA, Carlo Nana Carlo. We will the affairs of our honorable chamber of commerce from today, the October 17th, 2019 to October the 7th, uh, October the 7th, 2021. So let them, let us go. The past president, Rutilian Andy Oba Obasi, in his valedictory speech, thanked Asiba for the opportunity to serve. He owned some of the achievements of his administration to include the third Aba International Trade Fair, enhancing business with Bank of Industry, Korean Embassy, Echo Bank, among others. The new president, Lawrence Obeta, in his accepting speech, thanked Asima for the honor and promised to justify the confidence reposed on him. Speaking to MCL News, the past president, Rotarian Andy Oba, spoke on the event and expressed confidence in the new administration. The Chamber of Commerce, as the umbrella body of the business community here in Aba, is the voice of the business community. And on that note, you cannot sit idle and expect things to change or to things to go your way or to be better. On that note, we were able to uh, ask a lot of quality people to come and lead the chamber so that they can be able to direct them. As they direct them, they will also be able to impact on the business community so that we can see growth and development in the business community. The people that were chosen are proven uh, business leaders in their various businesses and also head of their households and communities. So we are very confident that they will deliver and we hope that this new administration will carry it as such. We are very hopeful that they will do a very good job. Some of the new escorts and members of ASIMA expressed joy at the event and promised to serve while continuing the legacies left by the past administration. I'm happy to be here today and today I'm the first person in our business community. Therefore, I should be happy and I'm happy. I'll go out and sit down and initial out what I'm going to do with my April executives who are distinguished in various phases of endeavors who look at what we're supposed to do and then bring out the uh, templates and then much our program. Well, we're putting to progress and to do well to make sure that uh, our business uh, individuals, as well, business um, uh, individuals, like I said, that they're doing well. We, 
lot of things need to be done in Abba. And uh, do Shemda, we can achieve that. Well, I feel well because um, I've been elected the VP membership of Abba Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture. So I also feel happy because the whole thing went on fine. No, we are promising Asima and the Abba business community that we are going to take Abba and the business community to a very a greater height. We are so happy that this momentum is being sustained and that Abba Chamber of Commerce is moving from strength to strength. I can wish them a very bumper harvest in their tenor, harvest of unity, harvest of uh, transformation, harvest of business development. The About Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture holds its annual general meeting and elections every two years. Ruth Ohams, MCL News. in Abuja, as participants from all sectors of the economy aims at setting a new agenda for the country. The theme for this year's meeting is Nigeria's 2050, shifting gears with emphasis on a critical strategy shift to a competitive private sector economy by the year 2050. The first plenary focuses on how Nigeria can prioritize industrialization and education to become a dominant frontier economy that is able to compete with the giants with the giants in 2050. While the second session will focus on how the country can use its demographic realities and its implications on internal migration and threats to sustainable peace and security. Other features will include a National Assembly Business Environment Roundtable, setting up a legislative agenda for a competitive private sector economy. While the Nigerian Economic Summit Group Economic Roundtable locally discussed the role of sub-national sub governments in developing a thriving, inclusive, sustainable and global competitive state economies. Ebony State Governor David Omahe has ordered the arrest and prosecution of all those who set up a roadblock that hinders the movement of his convoy on Friday night. Omahe's convoy was on Friday night reportedly blo blocked along Onisha, Onisha Road in the Onisha local government area of the state. The incident occurred on his way back to Abakileke, the state capital, from his Uburu, Ahosa local government area home. The roadblock was said to have been mounted by a group of people observing the Wake Keep sequel to a burial in the area. Narrating the incident at the Executive Council Chambers on Saturday, the governor decried the development, describing it as a criminal breach of the law. He alleged that the culprit made away with a gun belonging to a soldier and expressed worry over what they could have done if it had been an ordinary victim that encountered them. Enraged by the development, the governor has also pronounced a ban on the holding of workshops and other such ceremonies beyond 10 p.m. across the state. He has also detailed his security aides to ensure that all the culprits were identified and brought for prosecution and possible imprisonment. Still to come are the news. Governor Ibazo receives South African returnees of Abia origin, assures of government's commitment to reintegrate them. Bene election, tribunal upholds autumn's re-election. Nigeria's democracy is maturing, says Buhari. These and more after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> Do not deface Abia State with posters. Do not defecate on our streets. Do not litter Abia State. I say, what the man will do for this world? What people not gonna talk? If you talk, do 
cannot urinate in public places. Keep Abia State clean. This message is brought to you by the MCL TV. And we now go to our Omaha studios. We are Noru Kafo. He's standing by for more stories. Nora, good morning. Is maturing. The president, while accounting the 2019 general elections, said that Nigeria has shown the world that it is capable of electing leaders in a peaceful and orderly manner. The president said that while speaking at the 25th Nigerian Economic Summit in Abuja with the theme Nigeria 2050 Shifting Gears. In a statement by the president's special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina. The President said the nation saw an increase in the number of agreed candidates and supporters who took their concise and grievances to the court as opposed to the streets. Reflecting on the manifestos of the All Progressive Congress, the President noted that his administration's economic policies in the last four years focused on the need to appeal to the poor and the disadvantaged and encourage the pollution. The Bolivia State Governorship Tribunal has upheld the re-election of Governor Samuel Otoli. The tribunal gave the verdict after a panel dismissed the petition of the flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress, Emmanuel Jimmy, for lacking in merit. Jimmy, who is the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress in the state, in the 2019 general election had opposed the tribunal shortly after the election to challenge the election of Governor Otoli of the People's Democratic Party. To be particularly challenged the governor on the grounds that the election was conducted on March 9th and the supplementary election held on March 24th, 2019, were marked by irregularities and not conducted in compliance with the Electoral Act 2010 as amended. The petition of further alleged that the governor was not being elected by lawful votes, resisting that he scored the highest number of lawful votes, and as such should be declared the winner of the election or in the alternative order for a fresh election. The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, has distanced himself and the anti presidency from political repudiation. Magu added that agency will come after any person is alleged to be corrupt. He said political repudiation is not an issue insisting that there is no question of identifying the chairman of a political party under any investigation. The anti-craft bills reiterated the commitment of the agency to go after corrupt government officials and individuals. He has clear that the agency does not invite people on a hearsay basis, but only when there is something linked to the person. The Nigeria Labour Congress has expressed some questions about the implementation of the new 30,000 dollar minimum wage, stressing that Nigeria's workplace cannot be decent without a decent wage. Speaking at the commemoration of this year's World Decent Work Day in Abuja, the Vice President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Benjamin Anthony, 
call the volunteers of government to commence full implementation of the new wage before the end of October. He called for the implementation of the full negotiations for the consultation salary adjustment to be made and concluded so that workers have no reason, have all the reasons to smile at the end of this October. The Labour leader also called for the immediate adoption of the Violence and Harassment Convention 2019, number 190 by the International Labour Organization Convention. On other matters, in our part, no case has officially flagged off the 2019-2020 scholarship award. The government, while flagging on the project, charged their web residents due to study in Australia to be good ambassadors of the state and pursue their academics diligently. The report. Vices capable of bringing the disrepute to their families and the state. He noted that the state government will disown any student that throws the part of this honor. While pointing out the importance of capacity building, Governor Ibazu said his administration's priority in capacity building is to prepare citizens for the challenges ahead. The Governor added that the essence of governance is to create opportunities for young people to aspire to acquire. He added that his government places premium on education by making it a component pillar of his administration by educating the mind and adding value to citizens. Government has many components and capacity building is a very, very important component of any government because we want to prepare our citizens for the challenges of the 21st century and for the days ahead. That is why education is foundational speaking to our leaders of development. Chairman of the State Scholarship Board, Empire Kano, commended Governor Ibazo for placing premium on education. I think education, which is his prime sector to the next level, the governor has signed a memorandum of understanding with the University of Bahia and the University of Newcastle in Australia to provide scholarships for other indigenous for a minimum of 100 candidates per year throughout the administration of the second term. Speaking on behalf of other Australian partner universities, the representative of the University of New England, Martha Hendra, said that the university has many opportunities. She urged the beneficiaries to take advantage of the opportunities. And it is offering students many opportunities. And as an international student, when you come to a country like Australia, you are really very advantageous. We're a very multicultural country. We offer opportunities to everyone from every society and background. Governor Okeze Ibazo expressed hope that the scholarship recipients will impact positively on the economic growth of the state and Nigeria at large and bridge the gap in the society. Okay, the has a short South Africa returns of other extraction, but the administration is committed to ensuring their full reintegration into the society with plans to better their lot. Cabinet Magister Bus will be receiving the South African returns at Cabinet House for Marsha. They are known in the diaspora to leverage and empowerment programs of the state government and add value to their lives. The governor pointed out that the state has multi-skill acquisition centers in the three senatorial zones where they could be trained in various agricultural value chain programs like shoemaking, mass literacy programs and acquire soft loans to start businesses to make a living. He recalled that Nigeria and other Africa countries assisted South Africa in gaining her freedom and described their action as a misplaced aggression. So much uh, good to do. Uh, to have people in this room that can take you to um, shopping plaza area and wherever you want to go. help you secure the shop. I'll help you settle down. It's not disappointed to have you. 
Presenting the returnees to Governor Ibazo, the special advisor on diaspora matters in Gozi Yorondo said, Abia was the first state that reached out to the Nigerians in diaspora commission, adding that the returnees have been profiled. She thanks the governor for his gesture so far and also expressed hope that he would do more for them. Seek your assistance in their reintegration and reorientation. Some already have skills that they would like to enhance. Some are traders and they lost everything in South Africa. Some of them would like to get some seed money to re-establish themselves. Earlier in his speech, on behalf of other returnees, which in water while narrating their ordeal in South Africa, disclosed that the killings have persisted for years with Nigerians massacred and silenced before it degenerated to the latest outburst. He commended the efforts and opportunity provided by Alan Onyuma for evacuating Nigerians in South Africa and intervention of governor Ibazo. And we that came first really opened the way for many because of how many of us down here, more especially the future of the generation, the way they were being killed, the way they were being um, um, massacred in the name of robbery, in the name of the, their spouse, in the name of the cops, thank His Excellency, and all the commissioners and all the well philanthropy in short. We, we don't know how to appreciate each and every one of you. The Returnees prayed God to bless the government and people of Abia State. Now I That's it for the Maha. It's back to you, Journalogy, for the rest of the news. And now I can come Thanks very much, Nora Okafo. And now sports. The Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, has given invited Super Eagles players a deadline of Wednesday, October 9, to arrive for this weekend's international friendly against Brazil. They will report at the Fairmont Hotel, which will be their base, ahead of the highly anticipated encounter. The Brazil national team has already landed in Singapore and will be launched at the JW Marriott Hotel. Tite's team will hold their training sessions at the Galang Football Hub starting from 5 p.m. local time. The match is scheduled to kick off 1 p.m. Nigerian time on October 13. This is where we end the news this morning, but before we leave, a second look at the major stories. President Muhammad Buhari is set to present the 2020 Appropriation Bill to a joint session of the National Assembly on Tuesday. The Upper Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, ASIMA, has held her Council 17th Annual General Meeting and Election. Every State Governor, David Umahi, has ordered the arrest and prosecution of all those who set up a roadblock that hindered the movement of his convoy on Friday night. Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, has given invited Super Eagles players a deadline of Wednesday, October 9, to arrive for this weekend's international friendly against Brazil. That was the news, and thanks for watching. I am Jonah Oje. Have a good morning.